Hello, and this is a quick run through of what the Sunflower for Science software tells you about nuclear physics. Um, this is a very simple diagram of an atom, just a sort of empty sphere, and you might notice that there's there's no nucleus visible at the centre. That's because the nucleus is actually much smaller than uh, you're led to believe from most of the diagrams of atoms that you see. And the evidence for this you need to know. It's a, a classic experiment by uh, by Rutherford, which he uh, explained in 1911. And he was firing a beam of alpha particles, which we'll come back to in a minute, at a very, very thin sheet of gold, just a few atoms thick. It was well known at the time that, that alpha particles would just go straight through um, any any substance really when it was this thin and the amazing discovery that he made was that about one in eight thousand of these alpha particles came bouncing right back in the other direction and you'll see that most of them go straight through every now and again one is is deflected and there goes one bouncing back the other way and the only way to explain this was to say that almost all of the the mass of an atom was concentrated in a very very tiny area in its center which we now call the nucleus and so what this little uh, thing here shows, if, if you zoom in, what this box is showing you is the, the contents of this square. And you have to zoom in a very long way before you start to see anything. There's a tiny dot of the nucleus just appearing there. And it's only when you zoom right in that anything starts to appear here. And there is the nucleus. of This is actually a very large nucleus with lots of protons and neutrons in it. Of a, of a very large atom. Now these very large nuclei undergo decay, they're unstable and you need to understand this and how it's explained by this kind of um, symbol equation. Here we have the atomic mass 234 of prote protoactinium 234 uh, and its atomic number is 91, that means there's 91 protons in the nucleus and the total number of protons and neutrons is 234. Now the decay here is going to be beta decay, so if I click decay, off comes a beta particle, which is a, an electron that comes out of the nucleus when one of the neutrons turns into a proton and the beta particle. So the number of protons and neutrons stays the same, but we've got one extra proton because a neutron's turned into a proton, uh, and that's now uranium-234, and that will decay as well. The half-life is much longer, so it takes nearly a quarter of a million years for half of the uranium to do this. But when it does it, it releases an alpha particle. That means that two protons have left and a total of four protons and neutrons because the alpha particle is two of each. So 234 goes down to 230 for the atomic mass. This is now thorium and 92 goes down to 90. That's the atomic number. And if we keep decaying, this will go through a whole series of decays, releasing lots more alpha particles turning into lots of new elements. There's another beta particle, another beta particle, one more alpha particle, one more beta, another beta, and finally an alpha before we end up as, as lead, which is stable. That's no longer a radioisotope. It won't, won't decay any further. This is to show how alpha, beta, and gamma particles are deflected by an electric field. Gamma particles are, are uncharged, so they go straight through. Alpha particles, meanwhile, are negatively, sorry, positively charged, so they're attracted by the negative plate. So positively charged alpha particles going down here. And beta particles will be deflected the other way because they're electrons, they're negatively charged, and they'll be deflected further because although their, their charge is half the charge of an alpha, they've got a much tinier mass, so they're moved a lot further by a, by a smaller force. This one here is to show you um, the decay of these red particles and it's to get across the idea of, of half-life. We've got the percentage of, of red atoms remaining here. Now that will get down to 50% in about six and a half hours. There we go. And every six and a half hours, it will halve again. So it'll get down to 25% in about 13 hours. And it'll keep halving in, in the same half-life every time. Here we have some nuclear fission. If I press play, in comes a neutron. It hits the uranium-235, and it's splitting it into two smaller nuclei. And if I just go back there, throws out a couple of um, neutrons as well. Nuclear fusion is when two hydrogen nuclei fuse to form helium. They both release a lot of energy. And this last one is showing you the nuclear chain reaction. Each fission produces neutrons, which trigger more.